Before we begin this uh, investigatory podcast, uh, we'd like to make clear to our viewers and everybody involved, everybody interested, that uh, no one is accusing anybody of any crime here, but we are merely probing the points that need further investigation. Uh, Joe Pedraza, you're the lawyer in here. Why don't you um, explain it in your terms? Well, thank you, Larry. Uh, yeah, we are not, uh, the family is not making any accusations. What we do know is that the evidence says this manner of death with respect to Ellen is not suicide. That cannot be supported. And instead, there had to have been a murder. No question about that. Issues are raised that suggest that more investigation needs to be done. And all we want is that investigation to be done and let the chips fall as they may and hold those people or person accountable for the murder here and take those people and that person off the street so that we're all safe and Ellen gets justice. That's you are, all the wrath for. You are not accusing any individual of murder. That's correct. Yeah, we, we are not making any accusations as to anyone. We certainly have not even begun to do an investigation of that nature to uh, come to any type of conclusion along those lines. But we do know this is a murder. This is not a suicide. All right, Joe, let me ask you this. Um, if this was a case of active concealment, and a, which equals, you say, a conspiracy, how many people would have had to be in on this? You know, all <clears> the investigators, <throat> all the police department, uh, or could have been just one person giving the official version and others had to stick with it. What's your reading on that? If it is a conspiracy, how many people were active conspirators? Well, it, it's not clear at this point, Larry, which is one of the reasons why we'll have to go down that road. But we do know that at least in the medical examiner's office, we can establish knowledge for over two years of post-mortem wounds that even Dr. Osborne testified. If there are wounds she could not have inflicted, Ellen could not inflict, this cannot be a suicide and I have to change my death certificate. Now in 2019, Dr. Osborne was no longer in the medical examiner's office. So all you had was Dr. Galino and then you have Dr. Embry, the neuropathologist, saying that she shared that information with Dr. Galino. I will share with you a little bit more of a tidbit. We are aware that recently law enforcement has spoken with Dr. Galino. And Dr. Galino has apparently told law enforcement, um, and I'm sorry, that law enforcement shared with Dr. Galino Dr. Emery's deposition and what Dr. Emery, the neuropathologist, said about postmortem wounds. And unlike what the Attorney General is saying, uh, I'm told that Dr. Galino agreed that Dr. Emery testified there's at least one postmortem wound preserved in that sample. As a result of that, Dr. Galino says, you have to change the death certificate. It can't be suicide. But he denied that he was aware of that information until he was recently approached by law enforcement. Now, somebody's not telling the truth. And it doesn't make any sense that one neuropathologist is saying, I said this two years ago to the medical examiner. A medical examiner is now saying, I wasn't told that two years ago, but now I see it. But yet now everybody, the old medical examiner, purportedly the neuropathologist, and certainly Dr. Osborne, as well as our expert who happens to be a former medical examiner who is well-respected, not only in the state, but nationally, Dr. Ross, all agree suicide cannot be the manner of death in this case, given the evidence that we know. Why does it continue to be suicide? Why haven't the authorities stepped forward and done voluntarily what they're obligated to do? That suggests to me that there's some sort of motivation I don't know exactly what it is, but I do know that there has been a hell of an effort by a lot of folks to conceal a homicide in this case and to move it from the dial of homicide, 180 degrees to suicide. And I'll leave you with this, Larry. 
in Pennsylvania, suicide is not a crime. Once you designate something as suicide, that means there is no crime. Well, what's the job of a police officer? A, a job of a police officer is to investigate a crime. And if the, the police officer is told there is no crime, well, then there is no investigation. Well, what's the job of a prosecutor? A prosecutor prosecutes crimes. If there is no crime, then there is nothing for the prosecutor to prosecute. I don't think it's by accident that this death certificate continues to indicate suicide when all indications point to something else which would activate law enforcement investigation, which would activate prosecutorial discretion for prosecutions. But as long as that roadblock of suicide remains, this case will sit in a corner, in a box, collecting dust, and nothing will ever be done with it. And we're not gonna tolerate that. We are gonna get justice for this young lady, no matter how many years it takes or how long it takes, but we're not gonna tolerate this. And we're gonna shed more light on this situation and let the chips fall as they may. Before we go, uh, Sandra and uh, Josh, <clears throat> this may be painful for you, but <clears throat> can you share with us uh, some of your most treasured memories of your daughter? Sure. When we moved to Harrisburg, Ellen played softball. We used to live in North Jersey. And she played first base and she batted fourth or fifth. And there was a fellow here who ran a, soft, a girl softball team and he always won. So he said to Ellen, don't come to the tryouts. Nobody will, I'll pick you and you'll be on the winning team. And I thought that was, I didn't say anything, but I thought that was wrong. Okay. I hope we all in this uh, podcast think it's wrong, by the way. I don't know everybody that well. But we thought it was wrong, okay? And I said, Ellen, what do you want to do? Daddy, I'm going to the tryout. And that's what I thought. And she ended up on a lousy team that had a losing record, but she liked the kids, and it was the right thing to do. She knew the right thing to do. And maybe that's what we need more people to know, the right thing to do. And Sandra, some of your most treasured members? Um, I can't right now. All right. Right. This, this takes a lot out of me. 